This is your election headquarters. A former CPP member of parliament, Samia Yaba Nkrumah, says she has not abandoned the ideals of her father, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, despite ditching his party. She's contesting the Jomoro seat, which she won on the ticket of the party in 2008, but lost in 2012 as an independent candidate. Samia and two other candidates, the NPP MP Paul Essien and NDC candidate Dorcas Afo uh, Tofe, have been speaking on Joy FM show The Battleground, which airs later tonight. I have not abandoned our father's vision. I'm an Nkrumahist by birth, by blood, and by conviction. In fact, the reason I'm still doing this politics is to honor our father's great legacy by making a contribution in practice, in demonstration, so that people, especially young people, will understand what this legacy was all about. And it was about serving the people, using whatever you have, whatever assets, powers you have, to improve the lives of our people. Uh, Samia, in 2008, came at the point where everybody had a thought of the father in mind. So she got the glory and she got the, uh, the applause from the people. In her second term, we realized that if she was somebody who could not uh, go directly to the people. She always have to send people to go there, go and do this. But if you really want to talk about Jomoro, you must understand what Jomoro stands for. And you must know what they do. If you talk about me, for instance, I was born and bred here. I was schooled here and worked here. I've worked at the GHS for good seven years. Worked at the secondary school as a teacher. Worked at the secondary school for good eight years also as a teacher. There is no problem in Jomoro that I, I is here, do not know. Oh, I'm not in parliament yet, and the things that I've done with my own money clearly shows that when that mandate is given me, a lot will be done for them. I am one of them. I grew up here. I schooled here. I identify with them. I understand the culture, the differences, and everything. And so that's a plus. They don't have to come to me through somebody else who is going to interpret whatever that will be communicated to me, but they can come directly because I can speak the same dialect as they are. And that is the reason why I think they see me as one of them and I'll be able to help. Well, the battleground is tonight, later tonight on Joy 99.7 FM with MFA Apau, head of our political desk. Evan Mensa is joining me in the studio. He'll tell us more about this particular seat and why uh, we should pay a bit more attention uh, to that particular seat. Evans, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Gifty. So I, I find it interesting that Samia, I mean, for a long time, people mm. thought that she had taken the back seat completely. People yeah. didn't really hear of her. But now she's back and she wants to take back that seat with two more people contesting the same seat. Why is Jomoro very interesting? I mean, it's also because of Sami Nkrumah. I mean, she introduces a very interesting dynamic to this equation. She's won it before in 2008. Mm. I mean, so one of those few seats in Ghana where three parties have held before is very rare since 1982. Mm. Most seats in Ghana, most constituencies in Ghana would have been won only by the MPP or the NDC. But we have a situation in Jomoro where there's a third force. At the national level, we don't have a third force. But in Jomoro, there is a third force. A third force used to be the CPP. Mm. Um, I'm not saying Samia because when she won it, she won on the ticket of the CPP, CPP because she was there as on the ticket of the, level of the party. Now she wants to run as an independent. I mean, that changes the dynamic. Mm. The reason why CPP is interesting because of the Nkrumah's uh, sort of lineage yeah. and Nkrumah's association. The people of the of Jomoro, Nizimaz, they are very attached to the to the to Nkrumah. Yeah. Okay. So the the analysis concludes by saying that Samia Nkrumah being one being the daughter of Nkrumah. Oh, Nkrumah. But secondly, running on the ticket of CPP, Nkrumah's own party in two thousand and eight did a great favor. Yeah. Um, that's the only reason why she managed, she managed to unseat somebody like Leo Kran. Leo Kran was the NDC candidate in Jomoro when, I mean, in 2004 mm. and then lost to Samia in 2008. 
Now, Liu Kang was a, was a formidable person because he was a he was a an edu education minister. But for Samia to unseat him, it mm. told you the story of how the people there are so very attached to the party and to the the Nkrumah thing. Nkrumah, yeah. Now that she's gone, she's gone away from the CPP. That is interesting. Um, and by the way, the the last time she 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 was there again, and she she didn't do as as well. Exactly okay? the point I was going to. She didn't do there. as well. So now that she's decided to go as independent, the, the dynamic will change. The only certainty for me is that she's still going to get significant number of votes. Uh, that, could, that could affect the chances of either the NDC or the MPP. Mm. Because historically, this is a seat that the MPP, the NDC has held mm -hmm. at the parliamentary level more times than the, than the, um, than the NDC, than the NDC, that the MPP has held. Um, but it's not a safe seat for anybody because of the Samia um, dynamic that, that she introduces. So this makes it very interesting. O on a battleground, mostly when we, are, when we are doing it, it's mostly a case of the NDC candidate versus the MPP candidate. But yeah. this time, you cannot take out the, the Samia factor. And now that we have another person who also wants to uh, take, that, take, take that seat. So you have the Samia factor, but not the CPP factor, like, no. you, like you indicated earlier. Is there any... Um, interesting patterns or were there any interesting patterns that we can refer to before uh, Samia came in? The, the only thing is that NDC has always held this. I mean, uh, uh, apart from 2016 when uh, Paul Lysian got into mm -hmm. the picture and won it by 30, again, very, very, very tiny little margin there of 39.5% uh, of the votes. Um, in most places, it's bigger. If you look at the actual uh, number of votes that Paul Lysian won it by, this is 14,000 as against the uh, NDC's uh, 18,000 for the MPP's uh, Paulician mm. and 14,000 for Thomas uh, Leamoyanke of the NDC. You're looking at a difference of just about well, 4,000 votes there. Um, in, in, we, we have decided here at election quarters, I mean, the political desk, that any constituency where you win by 5,000 votes or less, it's a marginal constituency mm. in terms of the number, amount of votes you need to win it. If it's a marginal constituency, which means that it can flip um, going into the 2020 20, 20 elections, except that historically, talking about trends, this has mainly been an NDC place okay. in terms of the people who have won it until Samia got into the picture yeah. and then broke that trend. And then Paulician also got in. You cannot take away that factor also in terms of what has happened in 2016. 2016, there was a tsunami, as they say. <laughs> so swept across the country. Yeah. Paulician benefited from that. We don't know what the picture will be for 2020. Okay, and that will speak a lot for, for about the people, of the constituency, whether it's building itself, you know, to become a, one of the swing constituencies that we have, mm. and whether the Sami are going independent, whether the, the attachment is to the Nkrumah um, um, legacy, mm. or if it is the, the Nkrumah legacy as a person, or if it's more of the party. We'll get to see that uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Yeah, on, uh, the, on, on Joy 99.7 yeah. FM. MFR Power will be there and we'll be doing uh, that uh, uh, for you. You want to stick and stay to get more. But Evans, we'll be right after this, we're talking also about the ballot box, which is going on uh, up mm. north. Mm. Uh, just take your thoughts on this as we go there. I mean, the ballot box is always very interesting. I mean, um, Boku is a very interesting place to, to sort of visit. We know that Mahama Yaga has been, has been in Boku for quite a while. In itself has, has had conflict issues. Um, and so it plays into this. You want to hear what the people are saying. I wonder whether that the peace and the security factor might play in what the issues, what issues people are talking about, for mm -hmm. example, uh, today. And I know the parties are quite vigorously campaigning in Boku right now um, because they know it's important, because of the high profile nature of Mahama Yaga himself, who, because he understands that the N MPP for once is putting a lot of effort there, mm -hmm. has, has been home for a while making sure that he leaves no soon on 10. So it's an interesting <laughs> place to watch. Certainly. And that's why Winston Amwa and Evans, thank you very much for coming through. Evans Mensah is head of our political day.